So, hello again. <laughs> I'm here to uh, start us off with, a, with some things to think about as we move through this special service today. Today we are celebrating our Jewel Tones Choir and all the joy that they have given us. And so we've changed it up a little bit. You know, I'm just going to talk to you for a few minutes, actually nine minutes and 16 uh, seconds. <laughs> um, this month is the month of June, and I really felt like it was important for us to start off the month beginning to look at this um, uh, theme that we're going to be talking about all month, self-care. Mm, self-care. Now, at... At first blush, blush self-care may not sound very spiritual, but true self-care, self-care that is deep and abiding, that moves through your whole being, is truly part of your spiritual practice. It's part of the way that you demonstrate self-love when we take care of ourselves, when we make choices that are supportive of our body temple, when we take time to relax or to step away, to presence ourselves in any situation. That's mental self-care. When we do our prayer or meditation or maybe take a walk out in nature, that's spiritual self-care. And self-care is, is really important if we're going to be able to be balanced in this world that we live in that um, I think it's pretty complex. <laughs> As I look around me and I look at all the things that are going on in the world, it feels really complicated to me. And so self-care can help us to be balanced and to be our best selves and to be the people we really want to be in the world. And so as we look at this idea of self-care, I was um, thinking about um, the time in my life when I began to come of age and I started adulting. <laughs> and self-care was, you know, I was, I was busy. I was newly married. I had children. I was, I was keeping house. I was raising kids. I was starting a career. If you had said to me, so how's your self-care? I would have been like, tilt because I didn't know what that meant and certainly nothing in my life demonstrated self-care. I was busy taking care of business and taking care of family and taking care of children and taking care of making a living. There was too much for me to do for me to stop and really look at what it was that I might need. But I will tell you that over the last many years, that was, you know, when I started my family, that was in the um, yeah, early 80s, and that was a time when uh, work was really important. There was a lot of corporate culture was very important in our society, and, and I think that many of us um, weren't as aware of self-care, but the medical community over the last 50 years has really raised their awareness to self-care. They've under, begun to understand that when they are working with patients, that it, they're not just treating a symptom, that they need to look at the, the whole person. Now, not all of the medical community is, is there, but we have moved mountains in that regard. And self-care is really elevated in our community. And if you have been um, adulting since the turn of the century, that's the year 2000, folks. <laughs> if you've been adulting for the last 20 years or more, um, you may have a deeper connection with self-care and an understanding about how to balance life and work and play. Maybe. Maybe not. But what I think is, as we look at this month, it's an opportunity for us to put it in front of us, to begin to think about what it means to really love ourselves at a deep level, that when we make a, a good choice for our diet or our exercise or any of those things that represent self-care to you, that that really is saying, I love you. I have to do stretches for a, a little condition I'm working with, and, um, and sometimes getting to the 
you know, part of them are squats, <laughs> and I get to like number 17, and I started a practice where the last three, instead of counting the numbers, I say, I love you to myself, to remind myself how important self-care is to valuing my person. Because each and every one of us is valuable. You are worthy. You are more than worthy. You, there is so much self-worth in each one of us that I dare say we don't even know it. And so as we move into this month of self-care, I'm going to invite you to begin to look at some practices that you might want to incorporate and be on this little adventure with us all month. And so I found a, a list of eight self-care practices that you might want to consider. Some of you might be doing. Some of them might be a reminder. But there are eight good ideas that you might want to take into the month of June as we move through this this theme. The first one is meditation. The average hum human being has 60,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot of activity between our ears. So when you meditate, it's like a detox for the mind. It's an opportunity for us to create a little bit of stillness in the busyness of our thinking life. Number two is mindful movement. And, and that can be anything from sports to e vigorous exercise to walking to yoga, maybe some qigong, whatever it is that you do to move your body temple. Do it mindfully. Pay attention. Be with your body as you do those movements. Number three, needs no explanation, reading books that support your efforts in taking better care of yourself. Number four, Surround yourself with joy. Do something you love regularly. And I have, I have some thoughts on that, but I'll share that with you in a moment. Number five is ask for help. Is it just me? Am I the only one who has trouble asking for help? I um, am a big fan of the TV show Ted Lasso. Anybody seen Ted Lasso? Oh, yeah. If you haven't seen it, it's totally worth it the subscription fee, even it's for a couple of months to watch all three seasons. So the last show, the final episode, purportedly, is, uh, was this last Wednesday, and I'm not going to spoil it for you if you haven't seen it yet. But there's this one part of the show that they've created where they have a group of sports guys who support each other, right? And they come together, and they call themselves the Diamond Dogs. And whenever anybody needs advice or help, they come together, they call the diamond dogs together, they bark a little bit, woof, 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 <laughs> and they come together. And so in this episode, the last holdout, Roy Kent, if you've been watching the show, you know Roy, um, comes in to ask for advice. He doesn't think he's the man he thought he should be. And so they, they share some advice with him, and, and Higgins, who's the general manager, shares this nugget of beautiful wisdom that I thought was perfect for this morning. He says, human beings are never going to be perfect, Roy. The best you can do is keep asking for help and accepting it when you can. And if you keep on doing that, you'll always be moving towards better. Yeah, yeah. Number six is slow down. Simply eat slowly. Pay attention to your breath. Make time for rest and rejuvenation. I'm taking a, pr a practicum, practicum on that this month. I'm taking a two-week vacation starting the end of this week. So I'll come back and report to you at the end of the June how that works. <laughs> um, number seven is mirror work. Look yourself in the eye and say something positive to yourself in the mirror. I started the day with, hello, beautiful. You can too. Number eight, the last one, is practicing gratitude. If you take time to, in any situation, to see the things that you appreciate, you won't have time to complain or worry about the things that are concerning you. It's a great list, don't you think? The, the, la the number three, the um, filling your life with joy, I want to look at that a little 
closer right now as I wind up my remarks. Um, today we are celebrating the choir and all the joy that they have given to this community over the years. We're uh, ending that chapter uh, with our choir and um, there's a wonderful spiritual truth that goes something like incomplete endings inhibit new beginnings. And I don't really know what the new beginning might be in our music program. I know that uh, Diane King Van will continue to be our music director. But as we close this chapter with our choir, I want to celebrate and really look at this opportunity that we have for all the joy that the choir has given us over the years. And I'm really grateful that Diane, when she decided to let go of the choir, pulled you all together for this last choir show so that you, we could be in joy with you as you do something that brings you joy, singing and singing together. I'm sure that as you moved towards this last show, you had a lot of mixed emotions and competing priorities. But I really want to thank you for making the time to be present, for making the time to do this last show, and for making the time to sharing your joy with us. So friends, buckle up. <laughs> we have a wonderful choir show ready for you. And so without further ado, I want to introduce Diane King Van and the Jewel Tone Choir. <laughs>